All the average Joes out there appreciate this because I'm about to get my bell rung. Let's do this. Okay, stop. Now you're probably wondering how John got in this position. To answer that, I gotta take you back to the beginning. As a lifelong sports fan, I've seen multiple generations and a bunch of different eras of sports content. You had the Sports Center era where that's all we watched, and almost everything else was just worse versions of that. Now, you did have a few alternative sports programs, but those was mostly just geared to the late night crowds. The best damn sports show period comes to mind, but besides the cheerleaders, I wasn't really that into it. But in 2007, a little show called Sports Science appeared on FSCN for the very first time. The show gave you the science behind the best athletes from every sport with what felt like alien technology. And the show helped get rid of that old school notion that one person couldn't like jock stuff and nerd stuff. So this one time they compared an NFL bull rush to a police battering ram to see which was more powerful. And the two testing subjects was a SWAT team captain versus NFL Hall of Fame linebacker Ray Lewis. The experiment called for the SWAT captain to take a police battering ram. Same ones they used to bust in your house to confiscate inventory. He used that to bust open a real front door that they'd heavily reinforced and added the chain for good effect. So they measured the force, then Ray Lewis comes in. This man is fully padded because he's secretly living out every old school linebacker's wildest dream to measure exactly how hard he can hit. And I remember being shocked when they read off the results. The battering ram came in at 800 pounds of force, but Ray Lewis came in at a thousand pounds of force. Now this is really more of a hit stick than a bull rush, but please don't get distracted by that minor technicality. The show had a way of taking elite athleticism and putting it in every everyday context we understood. Back then, football wasn't treated like a thinking man's game, but sports science came at it from a whole different angle. They did the same thing for basketball, baseball, whatever, which allowed you to appreciate the games on a deeper level. And not just appreciate the games, but appreciate the individuals for the superhumans they really were. Now, they wasn't asking all of these life-changing questions, but it exposed the world to a brand new way of looking at sports. But then one day, it just kinda disappeared. Here. I say kinda cause from time to time these clips still pop up. And while it did get some great viewership in this new format, it still lacked the magic that made the original run great. Today we're talking about a show that revolutionized sports TV, but its run was short lived at least in its full glory. So let's talk how it started why it may have ended, and most importantly, why it could be coming back. Y'all already know what time it is, man. Cue the Wayne. All right, real quick before we jump in, today's video is sponsored by SeatGeek. SeatGeek's the number one rated ticketing app. And every day they got more than 70,000 events on SeatGeek. We're talking sports, concerts, festivals. I got my eyes on these XFL tickets myself, but you get tons of options with crazy variety. And SeatGeek wants to make sure you get a good deal. So when you're on the app, look for the green dots. Green is a good deal, red is a bad one. Pretty straightforward, kinda hard to go wrong. And they the only site that lets you return tickets ahead of events. And tickets are backed by their buyer guarantee. So use my code FLIMLOW for $20 off your first order when buying tickets with SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first SeatGeek purchase. All you gotta do is use the promo code FLIMLO. Click the link in the description to download the app and shout out to SeatGeek once again for sponsoring. It's impossible to tell the story of sports science without also telling the story of the guy who created it. This is John Brinkus, a small man with a big heart who was willing to get truck stick all in the name of science. John grew up in a time where, unlike today, if you were into sports but happened to be aggressively average, there was no place for you. You couldn't just start a YouTube channel and reach thousands of people. The best you could probably do was be a coach or a sports agent. But depending on which aspects really drew you into sports, while these jobs can keep you close to the action in some ways, depending on your personality, this might not scratch that itch. As a kid, John played every sport he had access to. Dude was determined to find something he could potentially go pro in. Back in elementary, he was the fastest in the class. But after first grade, dude got stuck in first gear. That started his obsession with measuring athleticism. As he tried to 
figure out what made his classmates so fast. But over time, he found himself just admiring their speed. And even though he couldn't attain it, he still wanted to test it. His other passion was science of the experimental variety. And later in his life, his two passions would collide. But not before he reached a point that almost everybody watching this video has reached in their lives. That point where your hoop dreams and visions of gridiron glory has to be laid to rest and you mourn because it hurts. But when one dream dies, bro, another one is born. We get so damn caught up in everything we lost and we miss the opportunity being born right in front of us. But John quickly accepted his place inside the world of athletics because running through a bolted door right the only way to leave an impact. It didn't seem like it, but the sports world was filled with opportunities. He started running towards his goals and he didn't stop until he got there. When he was only 21, dude started a production company, same one that eventually launched his Emmy winning sports show. The production company was John turning lemons to lemonade. He rented out his parents' basement, thus the name, Base Productions. So he formed Base Productions back in 1992, along with his homeboy and his partner, Mickey Stern. At first, they produced some short films and music videos, and if you're a videographer, you know that's how you start. Eventually, they worked their way up to local commercials. Nothing major, but it was key, like important to their development. So when they got their first major break 14 years later, they were seasoned and ready to make the most of the opportunity. So the first big show that was produced by Base Productions, you actually might remember Nat Geo's Fight Science, a show where scientists and martial artists would all work together to analyze the world's best fighting techniques and disciplines. They compared the strongest hits and the deadliest weapons. But it was cool for kids to watch because it was on National Geographic. The show combined two things that appealed to a younger me, well-trained skillful violence and a who's better debate. Fight Science was a hit, bringing prestige to Base Productions, but John was still running because he hadn't reached his goal. So essentially, fight science was the precursor to sports science. And only a few months later, sports science hit the airwaves. But right away, it kind of had a more personable feeling, thanks to the fact that John hosted the show himself. His energy and enthusiasm for the subject matter was clear. We didn't use these terms back then, but his energy was infectious. Today is hard to imagine a show without John as the host, but that was actually never part of the original plan. So John never intended for this to be him, out here taking all this unnecessary punishment. But the fact is, if not for a random request, the show might not have been nearly as successful as it was. When he walked in to pitch the show to the execs at FSN, dude was so enthusiastic about the info he was presenting. So one of the execs stopped him in the middle of the presentation and he asked him, Bro, why don't you host the show? As you can tell, John's a very positive guy. He just goes with the flow, so of course he agrees to it. So they build out this crazy facility in LA and it was decked out with all of this cutting edge technology. Here's the crazy part. That was the only leverage they had to get these big time athletes to actually show up. They didn't pay these dudes nothing and they still got everybody. I guess the athletes was as curious about their abilities as we were. When you call Ray Lewis and say, we think you're as strong as a battering ram. And by the way, we have the tech to test it. A dude like Ray Lewis is gonna hop on a plane simply for the chance to rip some doors off the hinges. People told him he was nuts. They said professional athletes will never show up for a science experiment but john believed the athletes did it for more than just money he bet his career on it and that parlay finally hit the first season was nominated for an emmy in 08 then season two brought even more success the second season of the show was nominated for five emmys and these ain't just nominations they took two of them to the crib the first emmy they won was for outstanding graphic design and the second was for outstanding new approaches in sports programming that second emmy almost seems like it was invented for this show an outstanding new approach hell yeah you damn right following the early success espn bought the show and i don't know what they paid but i know they paid from that point espn will own the rights to sports science they retained john as the host because why the hell wouldn't you but they changed the format from the original couple seasons 
which marked the beginning of the end for the show. The show was eventually reduced from its hour-long format into more of these little bite-sized segments. It became a small segment on SportsCenter and other shows, and it was still cool, but I liked it better when it was its own thing. That's my opinion, but they accomplished what they set out to accomplish as the show reached its all-time high in popularity. But your peak in popularity don't necessarily mean you're at your best in that moment when more people discover you. But John has spoken about the original season still getting tons of views across the world which i'm taking as a sign that somebody agrees with me now i'm not trying to say the acquisition killed the show it's complicated because i believe it extended the show's life the content business is the content business you can't stay a small innovative hidden gem forever espn's idea was to use the show to support their other shows so for them a shorter chopped up format made more sense more recently they've done even shorter clips online and some of those was dope too like the one on marshawn lynch you know how beast mode used to always be on the sideline eating skittles they did one to see if his sugar rush helped his performance they showed his atp production raised by 35 percent and atp is just a compound that provides your body energy due to the atp increase his grip strength reaction time and lateral movement all slightly increased that's a fun little question, a cool little experiment. It ties into the game, but it's creative, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes they do more serious topics like the effects of Deflate Gate. And that's what's dope about the format. They could cover a lot of ground. But more recently, the show pops up infrequently and random. The Beast Mode clip from five years ago could be the last true episode because the most recent ones I came across had really lost any semblance of the magic that they captured in the original run. No in-studio tests, no funny, creative premise and i ain't knocking it i'm just saying it don't really hit the same it's probably a lot harder to get the athletes in studio maybe today's athletes don't see value in the experiments and while i do miss a lot of things about the old school athlete you gotta admit these new cats they be getting to the money so maybe they need more motivation and we can show you something cool and maybe that's the thing that brought the show to its knees I also don't think ESPN's done a great job of ingratiating themselves with many of today's athletes. In the Sports Center era, we used to have these commercials that showed the athletes just chilling at ESPN headquarters. Now, obviously, these are only commercials, but it created a little synergy between the players and the network. Maybe not cultivating those relationships today has made it harder to get guys to be willing to show up. Or maybe John Brinkus was the one who lost interest. I could tell you firsthand when you pour years into something you go through peaks and valleys and other things tug at your interest but on that marshawn lynch episode which dropped in 2017 at that point john brinkus was still hosting the show by 2021 he was only doing voiceover and by 2022 he wasn't even doing that interest in those episodes weren't nearly as high without the test and without john that's what made the show great so it could have been the athletes or it could have been john or maybe espn didn't believe in the show as much as they once did it's still good analysis but it's just not the same i mean the difference in creativity like it's not really that close and here's the thing i don't know if they can recreate that feeling like we in a different era everybody can't go but with that being said like i do have some good news last year in late december john brinkus tweeted this big announcement coming sports science is returning but not to espn hmm stay tuned in a follow-up interview with front office sports he elaborated a little and here's what he had to say look for a new version of sports science to return in a big way across several media platforms and various formats don't pigeonhole sports science in only sport think of it more as sports science on steroids pun very much intended it'll have a much bigger impact in terms of accessibility audience and connections than the previous iterations there will be many partners there will not just be one partner it'll be a conglomeration of significant partnerships so rather than resting on one platform it'll rest across a wide variety of major players and he says because espn bought the sports science brand the new version will have a different and more powerful moniker so we're dealing with a name change 
change and sounds like a change in scope. Maybe we'll get the full episodes and the shorter clip, which makes sense in 2023 because that's where the video landscape is. That's where it's gone. That's where we're at. And you got to kind of play the game that way. I'm not against the change. Like you have to evolve things, but it's hard. And I hope they don't stray too far away from the things that made it great. He's expected to make an announcement within the next couple of months to give some added information on how the new sports science will look. So the show that once compared Troy Palomalu's reaction time to a single stroke of lightning to see which was faster, they'll once again try to capture that lightning in the bottle until the time comes to release it once more.